Hey guys, it's Tori and today I'm going to be giving you my TBR for February, specifically for the We Love Jenny readathon. This readathon is being hosted by Tiffany at Beautiful Minutia and Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space and I'm so grateful that they're hosting it. It is in honor of course of Jennifer Brooks who recently passed away and me being someone who really looked up to Jennifer and saw her as a friend here on booktube, I just had to participate of course. There are some prompts having to do with like reading something that she recommended, reading something that was matching with her passions, reading something that was recommended by a K-pop artist, and reading things about fig historical figures she loved. I think that might be all of them. Maybe I just rolled them off the tongue. I didn't super follow those things. I just kind of went for books that were inspired by her. Some of them are inspired by the prompts as far as like, I have three groups and one's books she recommended. One is books that she would have liked just based on the subject matter because they're about things that she was passionate about and then a little tiny group of historical figures that I know she loved and would like to read some nonfiction about and sort of buy them which we'll get into obviously in a moment. I definitely will not read all of these books. There's absolutely no way with how my reading's been going that I'm going to get through all of these but I want to keep my options open. There's one on this list that I for sure will read because it's also for another reading challenge but the rest of them are just like whatever I I get to, I get to, and that's great. So let's start with books that she specifically recommended. The first one she actually specifically not only recommended in general, but she recommended it to me and I never ended up getting to it before she passed, which is one of the saddest things just about my like relationship with her and the fact that that's lost, like the timing of it and everything for our relationship. I just, it really has made me really sad that I wasn't able to get to this before she passed so she could know my thoughts on it. There are plenty of other books she recommended to me and in general that I did get to that she would have seen, but this one is not one of those and it's just sad to me. Um, obviously the whole situation's sad, but that was just one thing in particular that stood out to me about my connection with her. So anyway, that book is Lancelot by Giles Christian. She loved King Arthur retellings, especially about Lancelot. She loved Lancelot as a figure. I can't say that I totally shared that interest in Lancelot, but but she did highly recommend this. She recommended it to me and I'm really looking forward to getting to this. This is one I might try to prioritize a little bit more in the month just because yeah like I said she did directly recommend it to me. It is a bit longer though so and I know that my reading slump while not the worst ever is still kind of there and I haven't been reading very much physically. I've done more audiobooking recently which I don't know what the audiobook looks like for this. So anyway all that to say I'd like to prioritize this, but it is long, so we'll just kind of have to see how the month goes for me, but I do really, really hope to get to this as soon as possible. Next, I have a book that may have been on her favorites of 2023. I think it's in the thumbnail of that video. I haven't watched it because I'm always behind on booktube and then when she passed I just couldn't bring myself to watch her final videos that I had on my watch later playlist because I just wasn't emotionally ready and honestly booktube in general I've been struggling to watch recently just because especially like this corner of booktube's videos because I mean people talking about Jenny which I do love I actually most of the ones I have watched are where I know that they're going to discuss Jennifer Brooks a little bit but I just my heart I mean between my reading slump probably problems and some other things and also now the loss of Jenny. I just really have struggled to want to watch booktube. I'm getting out of that but it's just taking me some time. Anyway, all that to say I've been behind anyway with Jennifer's videos and so I made their own playlist separately because I knew I just couldn't watch her last videos yet. Like I think I'm getting to a point where I could now but at the time I just couldn't and one of those videos was the favorites of 2023 and so I haven't watched it yet so I don't know for sure that this is on it but I know she read it and loved it. I believe it was in 2023 and like I said I think it's actually in the thumbnail of that video so there's a strong chance this was a favorite of 2023 or at least it was one of her favorite books that she's read recently. And that is All's Well by Mona Awad. This is a story following a teacher in a theater of some kind. I can't remember what ages she works with but she wants to do the play All's Well That Ends Well and they all want to do Macbeth and I know there's a lot of obsession and weirdness and craziness going on in this story so I don't really know how I feel about it. I have a feeling my 
emotions towards it will be strong either one direction or the other. I really don't know, but I know she really liked it and I did pick this up because of her recommendation. So I'm excited to give it a try and just see how I end up feeling about it. And the last book I have in this category is her favorite book of all time, Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's a vampire and there's this man who ends up having an interview with him and he's able to just explain what his life has been like as an immortal. And like I said, it's one of Jennifer's favorite books of all time, if not her favorite book of all time. She absolutely loved this book and was very devoted to it. I think it was one of the first books that really piqued her love of reading. I've never been that into vampires. I know she loved them. I never really did, but this one I did pick up because of how much she loved it and I just wanted to give it a try and see how I would feel. Some of the things she said about it made me think maybe it could be a vampire story I'd get a little bit more into. Even if I don't read it in February, I definitely want to read this this year. I think all three of these books that she specifically recommended I really want to get to this year just by nature of the situation. There's a couple other books that are a little longer that I didn't put on this list because I knew I was not going to be able to get through them this month and I wanted to limit to books that I actually felt like I had a chance of getting through several. Plus these are probably the top three that I feel like I most am associating with her recommendations whereas there's others that were recommended by her but maybe some other people also had influence. These three were really all Jennifer. They're, she's the only reason I got these so Next, let's move into some books about subjects and by authors that she really loved. Starting with a book, this is the one book that is on this list that I know for sure I'll read because it's also my pick for the booktube spin for January and February, hosted by Rick McDonnell. But there were two spins made for the booktube spin and I already read the first one. This is the second one that I did want to get to and it also works for this readathon. So it is The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. This follows the story of Lucrezia de Medici. I believe who was very young when she got married and then died under suspicious circumstances and it is believed by a lot of people that her husband killed her. Jennifer Brooks loved Italy, absolutely loved Italy. She went there often. She read so many books about it, about the Borgias, about the Medici. I believe she read this and enjoyed it. She just loved the history of Italy and the place of Italy so much and I haven't read that much about Italy or set in Italy so I would love to get to this one in general and then I for sure probably will because of the nature of it also being part of another reading challenge. It's also not very long so that's really nice. I mean it's probably like mid kind of length but it's not like huge which is great. So yes like I said this one's definitely going to be read. Next I have a book about a subject that she and I shared a passion for and that is the Titanic. We both really found the Titanic fascinating. She particularly loved the movie and I gained more of an appreciation for it through her. And the book I have here that I got not necessarily on her recommendation, I don't know if I ever heard her talking about this book, but definitely when I saw it I did think about her because of the nature of what it's about obviously and also the fact that she really helped me grasp a lot of my own interests. Like she helped me to feel more confident in my passions and being willing to talk about all of them. It's something I still want to work on in this channel is just sharing the things that I'm really really interested in the way she did. But anyway the book is The Second Mrs. Astor by Shanna Abe. I think is how you pronounce it. This story follows Mrs. Astor who was a woman on the Titanic who also was surrounded by scandal. She ended up marrying this man who was much older than herself and who was a divorcee which at the time was still very questionable. I believe she might have gotten pregnant outside of wedlock as well and then she did get married to him after that but it was this big scandal and then they were both on the Titanic when it sank. I just think it sounds really interesting. I've wanted more Titanic fiction on my shelf so that's why I got it and then like I said Jennifer loved the Titanic and she loved historical scandals and this just has that whole package so I really think she would have been very interested in this if she didn't already know about it and I'm looking forward to giving it a try. And the last book in this category is a book by one of her favorite authors of all time if not maybe possibly her favorite at least classic author and that is The Law and the Lady by Wilkie Collins. If you were ever on Jennifer 
Jennifer's channel, you know she loved Wilkie Collins, especially if you hung out with her for Victober. For me, I unfortunately haven't ever like loved, loved Wilkie Collins. I've read two of his books. I've read The Woman in White and then I've read The Moonstone, both of which I gave five stars, but they weren't quite like passionate favorites for me. They were just more like great books that I enjoyed myself reading, but they just haven't really stuck in my heart the way they did for her. That being said, I've been interested in continuing with Wilkie Collins and this is the one I currently own that I haven't read yet. I believe this was one that she enjoyed. I don't think she loved it if I remember correctly but it wasn't like on her lower end like she enjoyed it a lot. It just wasn't in her top. If I had Armadale I'd probably reach for that instead because I know she really loved that one. But this is the one like I said I have plus it's shorter than Armadale I believe is so that is helpful and like I said I don't even know what I'm going to get to on this list but I really also wanted a classic to be added to this list so there is that. And finally let's get into my section on historical figures. There were a lot of historical figures that I think we both shared an interest in. One of those people being John Adams and Abigail Adams. And I believe one of the prompts is to read a bunch of letters by an author or historical figure that you really loved because that was something she loved to do was read letters by people she was very interested in. So I have here the letters of John and Abigail Adams. This is a collection. I don't I don't know if it necessarily has all of the letters they wrote to each other but I believe there's a good chunk of them. Like I said I love this couple. I know Jennifer did too and I definitely won't read all of this but I do hope I can get to at least a couple of the letters in here get started on this during this month in honor of her and I'm just really excited to read this anyway because like I said I just love them as a couple so much and their letters to each other the little bits I've heard of them are just so sweet and wonderful like they just really have this great companionship and I just absolutely love learning about them and I know Jenny did too so that is when I definitely will get a little bit read of. And the final book on this list is a book that actually is by about a figure that I don't really know really anything about but I know she really loved her and I actually think this is a biography of this individual that Jennifer herself actually recommended and that's part of why I picked it up when I saw it in a used bookstore but that is Marie Antoinette by Antonia Frazier. This is a pretty decently chunky book. It's also a biography which just tends to be a little slower going for me. But like I said, Jenny did really love Marie Antoinette as a figure and I believe in this biography by Antonia Frazier is one that she did recommend at one point. At least I think it was her. I'm like second guessing but I do know she did find a lot of fascination in this figure and I've had this book for a while now wanting to get to know a little bit more about Marie Antoinette and so I feel like this is a really good time. If I do read this, it will probably be on audiobook if I can find one, which I feel like this is one that will probably have an audiobook. So I'd probably do it that way. That tends to be better for me with nonfiction, but I am excited to learn more about this figure that I know Jennifer was very interested in and also piqued my interest. So that is all of my possibilities for this month. Like I said, I do have a couple others that I could end up picking up. I didn't mention in this video if I really feel a draw to to pick them up but I think for the most part these are the ones that I most am interested in right now that I feel like I can read with the kind of weird strange slumpy thing that's been going on for me and I'm just excited to spend the month thinking about Jennifer. She just truly was an amazing person here on booktube. I'm so grateful for her. I'm grateful for Katie from Books and Things. She was the one who inspired me to watch Jennifer in the first place. I know Feb Regency is also going on this month and well the Marie Antoinette biography kind of goes along with that. I don't know if she lived specifically during Jane Austen, the time that the Feb Regency readathon is covering, but I think she did at least in part. So anyway, that one will cover for part of that experience. I also might read a few short stories from that time period as well, just to get a little bit of that in. I also actually, no, you know what I want to do? I want to read some poems 
by Percy Shelley. I've always wanted to, especially since Jennifer loved him so much and I've been very interested in his work. The only poem I've really read by him I love. It's one of my favorite poems. I'm not even really a poetry person, but this one just really stood out to me. So I think I might get a collection of Percy Shelley poetry and read that and then read um, Marie Antoinette and then possibly find a short story or two or something for Feb Regency as well because I feel like those will support the Jennifer focus but also support that readathon that I really want to participate in because it sounds fun and I just haven't been able to. So anyway, that all being said, thank you for watching. Let me know down below if you're participating in the We Love Jenny readathon or Feb Regency as I would love to know. What books are you planning to read? Are there any on this list that you think I should prioritize that you think I'd really like? Thank you Tiffany and Christy for organizing this and I think that's all from me. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!